What's up, everybody? We are here. Welcome back to another episode of the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast. I got I got Kabi here in the building. Say what's up, Kabi. <laughs> what up, though? No. And as always, I'm Chris, guys. We are diving into how to design your life again with extraordinary health and wealth. Find us everywhere you're listening and watching, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Leave us some reviews. Leave us some good stuff. Because as always, we got another good one for you today. How's life could be? Life is good, man. Life is good. Sun is shining real nice. You know, it gets a little little cloudy in the mornings here and that stuff. But, you know, we, we, will, we will make our way through for the sunshine and real day. So life is good. Life is good. Business is good. Um, yeah, man. How about you? Life is good on this side. Also, good weather. It has rained a bit, but again, rain is a good thing. It makes us adapt to life. Sometimes we need the clouds. Sometimes we need the sun. Being able to thrive in both. So that's uh, good. I'm with it here. Supporting your theory of uh, four four seasons makes four the kids seasons. tough. <laughs> Listen, four yeah. seasons, guys. Listen, this thesis is going to come out at some point or another. You're going to see it published in some books that a child raised in a place with four seasons, more adaptable to life. They can adapt better to life. That's really it. That's the way it goes. All right. All right. Hey, so, I don't, I think you, I think you got something there, but I also think you can do it. The kid can be, can be well adapted otherwise too, if they, 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 they got a solid home structure going on. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's always tough when like it's November and you feel like you can do anything you want. You don't understand what it's like to <laughs> be like, hey, there's six inches of snow. There's 12 inches of snow outside. There's a foot of snow. You can't go anywhere. School's closed. You got to play with these Lincoln logs in your house. <laughs> oh, my God. Do kids, kids still play with Lincoln logs? Is that no, I, I don't think I played with Lincoln logs. I did actually have some Lincoln logs when I first moved to the U.S. and I didn't know what to do with them. <laughs> Some people got me some Legos and Lincoln Lars. I'm like, what is this? I grew up in a place without four seasons, or at least until we moved. And uh, you know, I was always outside. Turn out, I turned out fine. Mm. Yeah, but you spent some time in the snow. Yeah, like, that, like was, you did. that was very unfortunate. No, it, wasn't. <laughs> it was character building. Again, we don't have to go there, but it was character building. Fair anyway. enough, fair enough, fair enough. All right, anyway. boss, what are we talking about today? Today. Extension of some of the stuff we talked about last episode, we kind of made this mention of the middle class. And so we're like, you know, let's let's expand a little bit on this conversation around the middle class and if there really is a middle class or what will come of the middle class and how this is going to impact your life or how this is going to impact, you know, our children's lives. Uh, again, when we're in the process of designing the life that we don't need a break from, right? Designing the life that we actually want. We have to start to take into account some of the things that are happening in society or that are will take us away from that life, or right? Some of the things we're seeing that are are not allowing us to get to that place. And uh, this term, this word, middle class, and kind of uh, this identity, it's all, it's it's an identity, right? People have like at least I'm in the middle class. Well, we just want to kind of talk a little bit about it because I don't know if it's uh, it's the identity to have, if it's even a thing. Is the middle class a thing? That's the initial question. I'll throw it to you, Kabi. Do you think the middle class is a thing? We'll get into the definition and I'll pull it up. But do you think the middle class is a thing? You know, I know we're going to get into the definition, but I think to, to answer that question, you got to know what are we asking? You know, is... I think on an economic, as an economic categorization for maybe our taxes or I don't know, the census or is that, is that what they call the census yeah, that they the do? Census, yeah. All right. They yeah. kind of rank folks. Um, but uh, the, that's that category. And then there's like people who kind of identify beyond just the W-2, right? They identify themselves as, you know, we're not poor, we're not on the wrong side of the tracks, but we're also not the the rich of the rich. So 
you know, we've got good middle class values. You were a good Christian going Bible th- middle class, and maybe it's not all of those things, but 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 uh middle class family. That's what we are. So there's like a value moral component to it. There's a economic component to it. There's a kind of you know, it, it really is an identity. But I will say this: like anything that we put into boxes, very rigid boxes. I believe there can never be enough boxes because as we dive into the definition here, I'm sure we'll see that. Um, you know, if I may use a very uh, touchy subject as race, for example, right? There's there's a few boxes that we put people in on the census. For example, you got to check a box. I was always, you know, I, 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 I always played some games on those boxes and see <laughs> see if it really mattered. But you got to check a box. But Truly, if you travel around the globe, all the different characteristics that we attribute to different boxes can actually be found in other boxes. So really, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, at what point do you all of a sudden go from white to the next box or whatever the next box is or whatever the next box is, right? At what point do you transition? Is there a sign that says you are now in Oklahoma, like, you know what I mean? Is there a road sign there? And I think my point is, I think it's the same thing for middle class. Like, uh, is there a road sign is, oh, my friend, do you get a letter in the mail that says, hey, you're Welcome officially in the middle the class. Middle, middle class. class. <laughs> okay. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's a range, right? If we really, if we really look, let's pick skin color, for example, for the, for the race example. If we travel across the world, what we're really seeing is, gradual change from the lightest of the light to the darkest of the dark and not all of them have fit cleanly into boxes so my answer is yes but no (laughs) (laughs) and some more ambiguity from Kabi. (laughs) come on man i'm trying to give the i'm trying to i'm trying to give the truth Listen, there it, it, it is a range. You said the word range, and that's kind of part of the definition I was going to pull up. Uh, when you kind of look at this, this is U.S. News uh, talking about what is middle class income, right? So if we just took income, what is middle class income? And it's funny because it says it defines middle class Americans as those whose annual household income is two thirds to double the national median. So without knowing what that is, it basically says it ranges from 52,000 to 156,000. But that's just middle class of the middle class, right? Yeah, yeah. It's they, a they, massive range. It is. 100,000 almost, more. It, it is. And if you want to know something even crazier about, and this is kind of what will go into a little bit more of our talk, is if you really look at how they they range what it means to go to the next level after middle class it's rich uh-huh. right so technically and this is where the the numbers are funny it says to go from poor or near poor right so poverty level it's under $32,000 a year household income if you're under $32,000 a year you're at, at poverty level but then they have this middle class section, which happens to be broken down into three separate parts of middle class. There's the lower middle class, the middle class, and the upper middle class. But all of these things are middle class, just understand. So lower middle class is from 32,000 to 54,000. <laughs> middle class is from 54 to 106. Upper middle class is from 106 to 374. So literally anybody that's rich would be over $374,000 in income per year. But it also just gives the range of what middle class is, lower to upper middle class, it's still middle class, 32,000 to 374,000. That's that's the range (laughs) of what would make someone middle class. So you could be lower middle class making forty thousand dollars a year and you're still technically in the middle class you might feel like you're poor or poverty level but technically by pew and whoever does this research they say that's middle class but it's also middle class if you make three hundred thousand dollars a year you're also in the middle class you're not rich you're still just the upper side 
of middle class. This is why the whole thing seems like big sham. This thing is not real. Like, how do you make that large of a jump and still consider yourself middle class? Because clearly somebody that's making $40,000 a year does not feel the same as someone making <laughs> $300,000 a year, nor do they have the same opportunities or outlooks or those types of things. So that's a huge range, isn't it? Huge range, huge range. And I think, again, we come back to the to the lack of clarity in the definition. Like, what are we really talking about? Because as you were saying, that huge range, again, what is it, 40, 30,000, 30-something 30 thousand? 30, 33, 33 puts you at the bottom of the lower middle class, 33,000. So if we're going to say 33,000 to literally like 300 plus thousand dollars, it's still middle range. That means we've got an issue with the definition of what middle range, middle class actually is. And so we might have to come up with our own definition here for the purposes of this discussion, because that doesn't make any sense. And in coming up with the, with the, the definition, we've got to clearly consider where do you live, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you live... And I know the hesitation you felt there is I was going to say, if you live with 40,000 in San Francisco, you do not live with 40,000 in San Francisco. Oh, absolutely. That's not, not a thing. You're That's not, not even, a thing. I don't know <laughs> if you'd get shelter under a bridge for 40 grand. <laughs> no, 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 no. You won't because you have too much money to be helped by the state. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So. So it's really interesting. Um, I believe I saw an article not long ago. And you can, You guys can double check me on this. Where we're saying, like, if you're making over like a hundred and twenty thousand or hundred and thirty thousand, you're still considered a pot in a range of poverty in San Francisco. Have you seen something like that? Or not? I did. It's so funny. I just gave that stat to somebody I was talking to. I think it's right around about a hundred and forty thousand dollars a year for a family of four. If a family of four in Northern California or Bay Area, whatever it is, right, is making that amount. It's still technically poverty level. You can still actually get government assistance. Family of four, hundred and forty thousand dollars a year in uh, in California, in Northern California. Yeah, that's insane. Nuts. That's insane. And and so here's another category that another characteristics I think we have to consider, which is you know where do you live? How how many mouths are eating off of that plate? All right, because that changes everything. How many people need to be fed off of that plate, off of that income that comes in? If you've got two people making three hundred thousand versus two people making thirty thousand, that's a big difference. That's right. That's a big difference. Uh, right. or, 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 or sorry, uh, two people making three hundred versus, uh, uh, let's say, a family of six making three hundred. That's very different. That's right. Greg, thanks for chiming in there. He said California takes $200,000 or more to survive. We understand that. Absolutely. A thousand percent right. Right. I just want to hot. Thank you, Greg, for the for the contribution there. Um, Greg, I'd love to know what the letter CLTC stand for. I always, uh, long, I'm always long, curious. Long, long term care. So he actually educated this on the like before Greg had jumped on. And I think we had, I had asked the same question. And it's uh. the. Certified long-term care. I think that's what it is. Incorrect. Got it. We're wrong, Greg. But I remember. I got a good memory, Greg. <laughs> that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. I always like to know what, what, what people are up to and what those letters mean. Um, hey, as you guys see, we do this show live. So if you want to hop on LinkedIn, Chris Muzon, uh, YouTube, um, I believe it's Kabia Sorry, Facebook, uh, The Good, the good life. life, hop in. We would love to love to get your contribution to the show because it makes it that much more rich, if you will. So going, rich. Back, to, yeah, rich. going back to what Greg was saying there, um, uh, notice, I just want to highlight that he said it takes 200,000 plus to survive, not thrive, to survive, right, in California. And he's counting the state of California. I would say it's very different when you look at the Bay Area, very different when you look at San Francisco. And it's also different when you look at LA, San Diego, et cetera. So it clearly where you are, how large the family is and who has to eat off of that uh, makes some makes a makes a pretty, pretty significant difference in whether you're considered middle class or um, not middle class. That's <laughs> that's really it. I actually think the definition is like, are you 
are you are you poor or rich? <laughs> and if you're neither, that's what we're calling middle middle class. That's it. I I think that is the definition. Like I think you just we got to clip that up, Ash, because that is the definition. I think we got to say, and that's part of what we we're talking about last week was like there's only going to be the rich and the poor. Do you call yourself rich? Do you call yourself poor? If not, right, if you can't call yourself either, then then you're in the middle class. <laughs> but that's, again, there's probably some people that are making $60,000 a year somewhere that will call themselves poor, right? And so I think it might be this fluid, fluid type of definition, right? Like fluid definition of what you think it is. In this article, it says there are some other things that are an impact on where you sit in this economic system. It says, in this economic class system, it says you can look at things like income, education, marital status, location, family history, gut instinct. (laughs) (laughs) I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. My gut just tells me I'm not poor. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Like, these are all the factors and there's so much that's factored in to this middle class, you know, kind of, again, identity that we want to take time to just break some of this stuff down. You know, think of education, how just because you have a degree of higher education, some post right? Secondary degrees or whatever the case is. You might look at yourself like middle class, even if your income doesn't reflect it, right? There's plenty of people in in academia that don't make good money, don't make, right? They might feel like they're under that poverty level, but they have a master's in some, right? Subject that's going to allow them to further their career in academia, which potentially could bring the money, right? But maybe they just find themselves being middle class because of their education and not necessarily because of their income, just because of their network or the people that they're around through the education. So that, that, that's an interesting one. The marital status one is another one that's interesting just because like, if you just married, you're like, no, I'm I'm in the middle class because I'm married and I have a house. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could just say something like that and it puts you in the middle class, right? Like it has nothing to do with, again, location, income, any of those things. It's literally just, I'm married and we live in a house. Like, so, so uh, uh, you know, we were talking about middle classes, income, W-2, what you actually bring in. Uh, like you just said, education, but it's, it's also a status, right? It's mm-hmm. also a status then. Um, going back to the education piece to break that down and then to break up and then to bring, connect it back to status. The education then, do you think it comes down to the fact that you have a degree or more so um, your ability to potentially your, your uh, ability to earn money based on your degree? Right. Like, hey, I don't make that much money, but because I have this degree, I can potentially make more money in the future. Yeah, I think it's it something has- like that. I think it has more to do with that. I think it has more to do with your earning potential, but there's also probably something psychologically just about how they position degrees, right? Higher mm. education in our society that says, if I have this, I'm better off. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Status. Mm. Status. Status. If I have this, I'm better than those that don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think, and again, it's probably a little bit of both on that side, but like, I would I would probably lean heavily towards the status part more so than the the other side of like their earning potential, even though they kind of innately know they could make more. I think it's really just that idea of like, I have a degree in this field, which makes me <laughs> not poor. I, a college graduate could never be poverty level, right? <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. And I think that status you know, kind of goes is what is really sold to. I know that's what was really sold to me as a high school, you know, a student Mm. looking for colleges, right? You're looking for status. You're not really looking uh, because uh, theoretically speaking, a a degree is better than no degree. And then a degree from a particular place 
it's worth a certain amount of cachet, a certain amount of clout, as the, as the kids would say. All mm -hmm. right. So if you got a, a no degree, you're nobody. Right. But if you got a degree from community college, oh, what? That's weird. If you got a degree from a state school, OK, I guess that's better. If you got a degree from from a, a, a private school, maybe that's better. And if you got a degree from an Ivy League school, oh, yeah, that's much better. Or a school that has a big brand. All right. That's very true. And, and even, I mean, honestly, and we talked about this too a bit, even if we did talk colleges and we kind of went down this path, you know, the middle, the middle class of colleges is going to get squeezed out too. Because yeah, yeah. just like you, you said, that degree from some liberal arts college, right? And it's some school in the middle of nowhere, but still gives you that degree. Well, that's not going to be worth as much long term because those colleges aren't even going to be in business long term yeah. <laughs> because of their right the expenses the way that this whole thing is shaping up uh by the way at the time of dropping this biden just announced that uh little program to to for student loan borrowers i don't know if you saw that but he's no forgiven. i didn't i didn't give you got we got a little blurb on it or something yeah for giving ten thousand dollars Ten thousand dollars for everybody that makes under one hundred twenty-five thousand a year, two fifty. Like, uh, yeah, if, if you file single or jointly, like two fifty or something like that. So, uh, definitely, gonna, people are going to start getting some. And I don't, I don't have all the details just yet. But people are going to start getting some of those uh, student loan balances decreased a little bit, and some people are excited about it. Some people aren't. At the end of the day, it just goes to show you that there's so much in this college student loan side of things that needs to be shake, shaken out, right? Like top 10% of schools might be around, community colleges might be around, the middle might not be around for some time uh, or after some time. Obviously, they're already now starting to forgive some of these student loans. So like, there's a lot of stuff happening with this higher education field. Yeah, going back to my experience with higher education, man, I realize now how little I knew uh, and how unprepared I was for the financial aspect of college, right? Taking care of what the costs would be. Uh, you know, everybody pushes students to make sure you go to college and finish your degree and et cetera. But nobody talks about how you're going to pay for it. And then nobody talks about what you're going to do to make sure you get a return on investment after you've taken on that big loan, right? Or big loans, right? I was here at 18, 19, uh, 20, signed in promissory notes. Uh, I have no idea what I was signing. I had no idea what I was doing. It was just a matter of Oh, this is what I got to do to take my classes next fall. All right, fine. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Here you go. Here's the signature. You know, make sure you frame that. Right. Because at that time you you feel like you, 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 you know, everything's going to work out. This is what everybody does. Right. And I think that's a huge problem there. And talking about because I know a lot of students out there, myself included, who are taking on majors and degrees where if we're just going to be flat out honest. The return on investment is very, very bad. <laughs> it's not good yeah. at all. <laughs> all right. So you come out of this and you might be able to. And, and I also know to counter that a lot of parents out there who are trying to buy status through their kids going to particular schools. Right. Every kid, mm -hmm. every parent wants their kid to go to Harvard. Right. Because that elevates their status when they've got that Harvard sticker in the back of the car. Right. Oh, you can. You, what? Jim, Middle class. Harvard. Right. Harvard middle class, middle class though like I, that's so funny that I think that's a middle class thing I don't think that I, agree. Wealth, I don't think that like and you know this is a super blanket statement but I don't think that rich people as much would hang their hat on the fact that their child has to do a certain thing go to a certain college for that status now I'm sure there are some that just keep family legacy or tradition right you know you don't if you donate to the school by golly, everybody's going to this school, right? Like if we have a building here, you better go to that college or right, go to that university. So that happens probably at the, you know, the top the, the 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 top levels. But if you really think about it, who's really pushing their kids to go to college like full force? It's it's the middle class. It's the 
that swing of people between forty, thirty, four thousand dollars a year and three hundred thousand dollars a year that are saying, "Hey, we get our kid into this school, makes us look good, makes them look good, sets them up." But that all is also the illusion. It's, uh, it's, I think you have a point, but I will push back a little bit and say this: you know, I do think that in that there may be more people that fall between that 30 and 300,000 plus how that are pushing for that stuff because they're fighting for status. But I will say this too. There's certainly a good amount of people beyond that point who are also pushing for trying to buy status, right? We just had a couple stories out, um, you know, not too long ago about parents who were paying off kids to get into particular schools. Those mm. aren't middle, those aren't middle class. <laughs> those aren't middle class individuals, right? So if they can okay. get Sarah and Jamie and, 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 and whoever to go to even Daquan's right to go to, uh, uh, to go to, um, Stanford yeah. or Harvard, it means something. It, it really yeah. does mean something, man. And I think, the people who realize it doesn't mean anything are probably the ones that realize or have the capability to open any door, regardless of what school their child goes to. But right. a lot of them also know and believe whether true or not. And I think there is some truth to it that if you go to Stanford or Harvard and shake the right hands and kiss the right babies, uh, actually, maybe you're not kissing babies in college, so don't do that. <laughs> um, but if you go to Harvard or Stanford or, Yale or whatnot, you get into certain communities, right. right? Which they want to either be a part of or continue to be a part of, and they don't care because they can pay for it. That's right. right. They they've set aside money to pay for it, so it doesn't. The cost doesn't matter. We'll pay for the status as long as as long as you know. I keep saying Jimmy, but maybe it's another kid. <laughs> I, as long as Jimmy can get in, right? Do, do, what do you think? That's of fair. That? No, that's that? no, that's fair. I, I actually agree because I did a a bunch i wound up doing like a different podcast episode about that whole whatever the guy's name was that that scandal where full house lady and all them right paid for their kids to go to get into these these colleges but they were just like getting into usc and getting into random schools i if it was more like just privilege and like laziness like ah my daughter doesn't really know everything ah just pay to get her in the college right like but what is the point, right? Like the point was the status. You're right, right? The point is like, ah, they got to go to USC because they're not going to go anywhere else. And I got to have this name to say my, my child's smart enough yep. to be able to get in. So yeah, yep. I actually yep. agree. I actually agree. What a, well, 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 well played, sir. Make it switch, <laughs> switch, switch my initial uh, thesis there. I'll tell you what, man. I don't think there are many humans out here who are above uh, status, if you will, right? Or above right. trying to reach a particular status or crawl, whatever it is, they still they still want it. Maybe they don't care as much, but they still want it. But what was some of the you said education, location? We talked about a little bit. And what was the other point? Other characters? Um, education, marital status, location, family history, and then the good old gut instinct. Yeah, I don't know what they mean by the gut instinct, man. But I wanna, I wanna perhaps attribute that to if you wanna raise your 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 status in terms of middle into the middle class or above, you wanna definitely care for your gut health. So we we, we will say that real quick. But in terms of marital status, is that kind of um like it's better to be in a two income household situation, or what do you think? Yeah, probably it it and it doesn't give any specific, you know definitions to any of these um, kind of categories but i would think that that's really what it means it's like once you get married that puts you in a different social category and i don't and you know the tide's changing on that too you know people are happy being single and happy kind of living their life doing the co-parenting thing or whatever people do these days but like the fact that when people do say that you're married or they say that they're married, nah, I think it puts you in a place of like, um, step above a, a little bit more responsibility, like a little bit more commitment. There's something there probably goes towards status, but I definitely think there's something there, uh, being married versus not married, that married is going to kind of put you a notch up on that economic pole. Yeah. What do, yeah. What do you think? 
That's an interesting point, man. And um, again, to highlight status, this might this might just be about status at the end of the day. Um, but I look at so many different things or or junctions or critical milestones that we hit in life that require, you know, either a really, really high income from somebody or two, two people in the house. Even if one person is making a lot of money, um, the other person to kind of r run life, right? Because mm -hmm. if you, if it's almost like you got to pick and choose, right? You can't go out and, and be in a situation where you're making a lot of money and still have your, your house kind of intact. Um, you know, I always think about LeBron, uh, and his wife, um, for this, um, not Gloria James, but Gloria James yeah. is his mother, right? Yeah. I don't know his wife's name, honestly. Okay, cool. Shout out, shout out to the Jameses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to the point where, where it's like, uh, he could probably hire people to do what he does, but for him to be like seen as this family man, et cetera, like, Hey, his his wife is basically 50 like running that whole entire yeah. side of the family right the yeah. whole entire side of the equation period Absolutely. Right? so and then you look at i i, I want to i don't know the stats on this off the top of my head but you look at I, at some point at one point in time you know they say that a, a carpenter all right, a husband who was a carpenter or a, or a female, but typically it was a husband who was a carpenter could take care of a, of a four, 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 four people family, right? Send them, give them everything they need, care for everybody. And then the wife could choose to stay at home. There was no need for her to, to, to go to work um, because that carpenter was making enough money to care for everybody. At some point in time, that switched. I don't know if you know when that was or not, but that switched to a point where now it was required for you to maintain that status, right? In the middle class, upper middle class, upper, upper middle class, not yet rich, but you upper, <laughs> upper, upper middle class, right? For mm -hmm. you to maintain that status, now both people got to go to work, mm -hmm. which, which, which doesn't make sense to me because when you look at that now, looking at, well, if you have kids, you got this child care involved. Right. And I look at some of the costs, particularly out here in the West Coast of child care and schooling. And I'm like, you're, you're, you're basically canceling out one person's income. Yeah. Just in just in child care and schooling. <laughs> Literally. Like, yeah. I don't know when that switch, bro. Like, honestly, I don't I don't know when that switch. But is that a combination of, you know, some people want to call it inflation. Some just, you know, cost of goods going up over time. Is it that income hasn't been on pace with the cost of things going up? Income has kind of stayed stayed relatively stagnant. Uh, is that by design? I think it's a few things. I think it is in a way by design of some of the things that we talk about quite often. For example, uh, and I talk about the different milestones. I think the increasing cost of college right? Puts people in debt. So they're handcuffed for a longer period of time. And then their kids go to college. And then they, by the time they reach there, they're handcuffed for a longer period of time because now it's falling on mom and dad. I also think it's because when you look at, for example, um, inflation over time, not only is the, is the cost of, of education going up, but the cost of other things that have been sold to us going up. So you have cop college cost of college you have inflation literally our money buying less and then you have things like the cost of childbirth right significantly skyrocketing and when you start to look at that you realize that certain things are being pushed that maybe don't need to be pushed that increase uh the cost of something like childbirth the cost of like cars and people getting into handcuffs into purchasing uh cars through uh, loans that then put you into handcuffs, right? Um, then you have things like uh, uh, like uh, the, the American dream of home ownership being sold, right? Mm -hmm. Which then gets people into more handcuffs. And then you have things like living, you know, living, uh, not just are you getting any car, but you're getting, you know, the BMW because that's a status symbol, right? You're getting, you're moving into the suburbs because that's a status symbol. You're, you're, so it's all of these different status symbols that in a way, if you're able to kind of navigate around it a, a bit, 
<laughs> you might be able to get yourself to a place where your money is actually working for you rather than you working for your money to go pay off these handcuffs. But none of that is sold to us that way. It's sold to us like you should have these things. If you want to signal that you are in the middle class or doing well, then why don't you have these things? And even if you can't afford them, hey, listen, you can borrow to have them, right? You can borrow to have them. And the, and I think that's huge, man, because I think those are things that, along with others, right? You know, uh, healthcare, right? Uh, along with other things that are systematically locking people in to a lifestyle that is, I don't know, man. It's not looking great. Yeah. It's not looking great. Yeah. I think, man, we're touching on, and, and that was spot on, bro. Like, honestly, that's spot on for, like, what keeps people in handcuffs. You ever heard the saying, the golden handcuffs when it comes to income, like working? Golden handcuffs are people that have very cushy jobs that are in the upper middle class, potentially, right? or just the regular middle class, who knows? but that now their lifestyle right has crept up and so that job it's kind of like it's keeping them there because it pays for their lifestyle but it also sucks away all of their time and they don't have time to enjoy or go do things or right enjoy the money but yet the job is so easy it's kind of like on autopilot for them yet it's taking away from the other sides of life so that's the golden handcuffs when it comes to income side of things right yeah, real, real quick with that though i wouldn't say the job is easy i would say the job is now it's non-negotiable mm -hmm. it may not be easy because if you're a doctor you're a lawyer typically those are the golden handcuff type of jobs True. Uh, i wouldn't say it's easy i would say that you can't make that much money anywhere else to care to pay for that lifestyle that you have sure and that's and that and, and that's on the higher end because you can come down that list and I know people that have the golden handcuffs in their, in a pharmaceutical sales position, or they're in like a, right, some other random sales job or something like that, where it's just like, damn, I just know this too well. And I only have to do it for six hours out of the week. And da, 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 da. you know what I mean? Like, so there's, but there's both sides to that. It's the ones that you can't do anything else because nothing else is going to pay your lifestyle the way that this does even though there's probably some entrepreneurial endeavors. But again, most people don't jump jump out and go do that. Um, or just the ones that like, you make $112,000 a year and it's like autopilot for you, but your lifestyle requires $112,000 a year to come in yeah. for, you to, for you to like continue to drive your BMW or have your house. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. It's just, there's levels to it. I believe there's a scale. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that but that being said, like all of this these handcuffs, whether it's on how the money comes in, our jobs, what we do for work, or like you mentioned, all of the liabilities, all of the the house, the car, the all the things that we're supposed to have, it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion, right? Again, again, who made these rules that the house is an American is the American dream? Mm, the bank. Who, exactly that's exactly the answer i just the think bank. our listeners don't understand that all the time that like it was not the actual american dream for you to just own a home it was the bank's american dream so that they could constantly have your money well i'll say this if i'm if i if i kind of i think we need to unpack this a little bit if we're going to talk about the middle class because i think this is one of the if we would list them this is one of three maybe four things that keeps people within this cage of what we call a middle class which um at the end of this i'm i i may argue doesn't even really exist right um it's a it's a suspended effect i'd say cost of education um things like a car like a vehicle I see a lot of people spend a lot of money on vehicles, um, which makes no sense to me. Well, let me just sidebar uh, that real quick. You know, the amount of people paying more than five hundred dollars a month for a car payment is way more people than you think, and that's just crazy. It doesn't matter what your income is. 
paying more than five hundred dollars a month for a car note is a lot. But go ahead, we digress. Yeah, makes no sense, man. Makes no sense, and it took me. Yeah, I uh, learned an expensive lesson on that when I got out of college. So I, I will never, never again in my life. But yeah, uh, cost of education, because right out of the gate, right? If we track the life right out of the gate, high school, college, bam. Now, if you are not in that top percentage and you're in the middle class, that means your parents probably have to borrow and or you have to borrow to keep up with the increasing cost of education. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of people are doing that without getting a degree that's going to return their investment on that education. And I think it's almost intentionally sold to students in a very kind of predatory way. Right. So that's number one. Then you get out of out of out of a, a college and maybe at that point you purchase a car because you have you've landed a job. You purchase some sort of car on a car note which is over $500, like insane. Mm -hmm. Then out of that, you might, um, I think another one would be um, the cost of children. The cost of, of just childbirth, children in general is going out insane. And not saying you shouldn't have kids or anything. I'm just saying it's like, it's increasingly expensive every single year. And you, you have to get them into that that school, right? You have to get them into that, 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 that hobby or that whatever. <clears throat> it just keeps going up. I feel like parents are like shamed into these things almost. Right. So that's number three, number four, then somewhere around there, either before that you pick up the house. All right. So there's four, probably more, but four things that seems like it's automatic. Bam, 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 bam. Right. Where it seems like you just it's automatic. Yeah. It's so funny because as you name them, like outside of like the college and me just going and right, that was the path. The other three, like try to being in the financial space, I've just learned to stay away from as, as long as possible. Right. Like the first few cars that me and my wife got, we got them from an auction. Right. We just kind of paid for them. They weren't, you know brand new cars they weren't they weren't even two years old. they're probably like three four year old cars got from an auction right like just don't want a car note it doesn't make sense to pay all that money right the child thing the education thing for children we're trying to keep our daughter out of the traditional education system in general i'll put that on record consistently to say like we just we we don't want her being in that that system necessarily but still it comes with so much other expense right like to now have tutors or to homeschool or to create the activities and buy the activities and do the other extracurricular things it's still a bunch of money but you know the traditional schooling thing probably wouldn't be it um and then that house right like granted we have one but like uh man we were renters for a very long time and i believe in it more than anything it just happened to be our circumstance right now but uh the renting side is important Right. I think I think it's good for people as much as people want to go and buy that home and like solidify it. It's such handcuffs to their financial life. But again, status back to this word. Right. Like when you get to say, oh, I'm a homeowner. Apparently you feel better about your life. Oh, apparently, absolutely. apparently absolutely. you just you people just literally better. congratulate you. Yeah. People congratulate. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Yeah. Right. I, this is this is a, a rule that just I honestly just kind of came. To, I felt this for a long time, but just came to mind. This is a rule. And I should go and want to clip this. Right. This is a rule of life in general. When you have the general middle class. Right. Clapping for you when you do things. You should double think whether or not you're doing the right thing, right? Oh my gosh, you got into such a great college. Oh my gosh, you're gonna buy a car. Oh my gosh, you just got a new house. Oh my gosh, you just had your first child. Like, you sh I feel like all of those things, you should just pause for a second and make sure that you're really doing what you want to do and you have it well thought out. I don't, I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying when those things happen, every single time in my life, I'm like, May have fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> 
every single time. Right? <laughs> For real. I, I got 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 a car out of car. Oh my god, what a nice car. You got why? That's so great. Da, da, da. Car note, car note, car note. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ended up eight thousand dollars underwater. Mm. How did that happen? Right? It just flew by me, right? Went, went went to college. College college out here costing. I forget what it cost, but one of the most expensive colleges out here in a totally different state with no support, anything like that. Now, granted, you know, I was able to figure it out debt free, but man, that thing that thing rung rung me out, right? Uh, you know, so it's like all of these different things. Uh, it, even even for 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 like uh, things like a wedding, right? Spending an insane amount of money on a wedding, right? It's like. You know, if you do, if you don't have it, don't do it. Don't even, do it. Even listen, we'll take. I'll take it one step further. Even getting a job, mm. even getting a job, right? When everyone just congratulates you for the entry level, like I see this type of stuff on Facebook, and it's you know, to each his own, right? No judgment in 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 this space, but like it's just always interesting to me, like when we applaud the child for getting a job. Like the the sixteen year old, seventeen year old, like look at Susie, she's got a job, and everyone's like, yeah, she's got a job. <laughs> it's like, you no, know, she works at she works at McDonald's, like she works at Chick fil A. Like, why are we why are we applauding this? Like, is this not is this something that should be applauded because they got an entry level position? great work ethic, great work yeah. ethic, right? Like what? What but God we? forbid, God forbid, Susie says, hey, listen. Mom, I'm gonna go start a business. Da 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 da. Yeah, Susie, do you have a plan for your life? You That's know, right? right? Bro, That's right. This... I'm gonna go. I, like, I mean, I I made a video that was talking about like where I think we should steer our children. Right, just a little parenting opinion on my part. Just saying, like, hey, if we're gonna like set our kids up, you know, how we were always saying go to school and get good grades and all that good stuff. But like, if we're gonna set them up for like the future, any kids that are under the age of you know twelve right now, under the age of thirteen, something in STEM, right? Some type of technology, being able to code, even just understanding some of the technical aspects of this stuff, computers, metaverse, all that type of stuff, right? There, there's got to be some technical aspects that they're learning or it's going to be artistry like just the 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 thing that robots can't take over the things that are innate to us humans the the music the the poetry the writing the those types of things in art i think those are the two directions that we should start steering kids cuz everything else is going to get commoditized it's going to get right taken over by machines or robots or whatever the case is so like it should go that those those directions, and even then, having these conversations about like the arts. A, a, a kid wants to, you know, is is eleven and wants to be a YouTuber, but their parents already kind of poo poo on it, and like are like, well, what else can we do, right? Like, no, set them up a channel and like help them get to that place because that's actually something that will help them. Right, if they're in arts, it's gonna help them get their artistry out a lot sooner. But we don't see those types of lanes for our kids. And uh, I think we just have to have a difference of perspective, right? We gotta really change how we're thinking about what the future is gonna hold and how we equip our children for this manner. Yeah, I totally agree, man. I totally agree. And I think it's hard for parents to break away from ideology that maybe they had pushed onto them by their parents and people that they knew. And so it's difficult. I get it. I understand. Um, so that's why we do stuff like this to put out the good life and, and and try to, you know, bring people's minds to this and start thinking about this a little differently. Right. It's uh, I'm at a stage now where I'm seeing so many of my peers get an MBA. Mm. Like it's just the I, next logical step. Right. It's just every time I hopped onto LinkedIn and and you would think there was only three schools offering MBAs, literally three schools like it's, it's literally three schools offering MBAs. Like it's in, insane. Um, oh, I you know, I just spent, you know, you know, seven years at at a. At, at, uh, 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 at Google, and now I'm going to go get my MBA, and, and like 256 likes. Congratulations! And oh my god, that's so great! Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> double check, double check, double check. Right? 
again, too many not, people, too many people are applauding for you. You yeah. might be going down the wrong path. You might be going down <laughs> the wrong path. Not, not for certain, but it's a right. litmus test. Absolutely. It's a litmus test. You know, Absolutely. you want, you know, you know, it's like a pregnancy test. You might need a second one to confirm, but that's not a good sign. <laughs> You know, that's not good. I right? no. or or uh, God forbid a cooking <laughs> test. <right? laughs> right? uh, it might not be good. Shout out Fauci is out here retiring after he set the whole world on fire. I see, heard. You, see you, see you, Fauci. I heard. And enjoy, I heard enjoy, enjoy your enjoy your package into into retirement. <laughs> you devil. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ash, feel free to edit that out. <laughs> We're live, sir. Yeah, we're, live. Oh, we're live. Okay, great. That's how I feel. <laughs> it is what it is. But guys, we're, we'll wrap up to today's episode. We really just wanted to bring this to you to really, you know, make you aware. Is the middle class an illusion? Is the Are these, these metrics to make you middle class? Is that an illusion? Is this something that we should still be sticking to? Or is it you're rich, you're poor, you have, you don't have, you want to go here, you want to be in this side, right? Like what really creating this identity for yourself instead of kind of what society wants it to look like, I think is really the, the important message. And you figure, and again, going back to the thesis here, the good life, designing a life you don't need to break from, right? Really taking your life to the next level in all of the areas, health, wealth, your mindset, your relationships, all the things that will bring you the life that you're looking for, we have to first be aware of the things that are around us, these things that handcuff us, the middle class conversations or, you know, the the, the ideologies of the middle class. Um, some of the things that we talked about today about status, about, you know, whether college is really worth it for your child or whether that house is really your dream. It might be the American dream, but is it your dream? Uh, all of these things go into whether or not you would consider yourself middle class. And if you even want to consider yourself middle class, I personally would think that we get rid of that term and just literally start to design the life that we want. If you if you're not where you want to be, then keep striving to that place. Whenever you get to that place, it doesn't matter about a label. It doesn't have to be rich. It doesn't have to be poor. It doesn't have to be middle class. Just get to the to, to the status, to the income that you want, to the lifestyle that you want, to the relationships that you want, and call your life your life. That's right. That's right. And if you guys pay attention, you know, at the beginning of this, we struggle to even define what middle class is because a lot of these terminologies are just little boxes that we try to fit people into so i would encourage you you know at least what i'm taking from this is i don't want to fit myself in a box i want to go as far as uh, as my abilities and imagination and whatnot will take me and uh for me i think that means and one thing i got from this conversation man is that we got to look at these different sort of like life markers right life markers whether it's education whether it's marriage whether it's house whether it's children whether it's a car whether it's all of these different things and i think those things can either lock you into into the the rat race if you will they can either lock you into the rat race or they can actually help elevate you and ramp you up towards the lifestyle that you want to live so for me, that's something I'm taking for this is just like look at those things strategically and and look at what everybody's doing, all normal folks, normal people are doing, middle class is doing, and not do those things, right? Mm -hmm. Or do it or be more creative about how I'm approaching these things. And that means that I'll probably take a little bit of a pushback, get some extra looks, get a little bit of gazing, right? Because when you're doing something different that's not normal. People uh, get uncomfortable because it's like you're putting a mirror up to them and then they start thinking, whoa, did I do this right? Why aren't you following, you know, the normal protocol? Why aren't you falling in line, Johnson? Right. <laughs> so I think it's important that we take a look at those things in the spirit of designing and creating a life. And uh, guys, you know, that's it for us today. If you Greg, guys go ahead, you. go ahead, bro. We love you too. Oh, Greg, Greg is on here. We appreciate you. We appreciate you uh, checking into the show. Hey. And everybody else that's checking into the show, we appreciate you guys. 
This is like episode like 82 or something, 83. I don't even know what we're Somewhere on Somewhere right in now. there. Somewhere in there. But we're headed road to 100. Road to 100. It's about to get there. It's going to be amazing. So we appreciate people like yourself, Greg, for checking in and showing us some love and everyone else that's listening and watching. We appreciate you as well. Much appreciated, Greg. Uh, and everybody that's watching, um, that's episode 82 for us, Road to 100. We're getting there. And um, after 100 or at 100, we've got we've got a crazy show coming up for you. Mm. It, like, you know, elephants, dancing lions and tutu. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. And if you've got some folks that you believe will make an impact and bring some information um, and bring some uh additional energy information and, and 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 help enhance the message that we're trying to put out there we'll love to have them tag them tag them in us right. so right. love to see them that's right that's right so till next week guys we're gonna sign off of the good life as always keep living the good life <laughs> <laughs> make sure you share this to somebody that would love to hear it all press is good press. Until next time, keep living a good life. We out of here, baby. Peace. Peace. Welcome to the good life.